Construction Because FrameCAD framing is precision manufactured to an accuracy of just one millimeter, it's critically important to construct the foundations and floor with the same degree of precision. The floor must be level. Any variation greater than 5 mm per 10 meters will create problems that can delay build time and compromise finish quality. The floor level should be carefully checked during construction using laser level technology. Accurate diagonal diagrams should be provided with the foundation plans so the builder can check that the floor is square prior to erecting the framing. There are many different ways to erect steel frame walls and trusses. Often, the method used will depend on design factors, building regulations, and environmental considerations. In most cases, walls are erected starting from the rear of the building and progressing to the front. However, you may have to deviate slightly from this plan if any oversized walls are involved, and allow extra space to accommodate them during the building process. The fixing position for each wall can be pre-marked with chalk lines. Alternatively, the position of the triples or plaster studs on the framing will provide an accurate guide. It's important to ensure that the steel framing does not come into direct contact with either concrete or treated timber. Standard practice is to use a barrier such as a damp proof course in between these surfaces to avoid the possibility of adverse chemical reactions. Each wall frame is stood up and screwed to an adjacent wall using self-drilling frame CAD screws. The task is much easier when you use a screw that sticks to the bit so the screw won't fall off when working at awkward angles. If the floor is level and dimensionally accurate, the framing should fit together without requiring any adjustment. Trusses are usually positioned over studs to support the roof loads. Check the frame layout drawings to determine the position for each truss. Once all of the walls and trusses are assembled, straps, braces and tie-down connectors are secured. These can also be used to secure floor trusses to walls. The steel coil used to produce frame CAD profiles can be used as additional reinforcement to enhance joist end stability and to strengthen lintels above windows. 90 degree angle is used for additional backings. Walls are secured to the concrete slab by either chemical set bolts, cast-in strapping, or sleeve-type expansion anchors. The roof provides weather protection and is usually the first part of a building to be completed. A moisture barrier should be laid over the top of the roof trusses. In some instances, a radiant barrier like aluminium foil is used. A wide variety of roofing materials can be used in steel-framed buildings including color-coated steel in roll-formed profiles or pressed tiles. Other traditional roofing materials such as shingles or tiles are also possible. Once the roofing is fitted, barge boards and fascias of steel or timber are fixed to the roof perimeter. Then the guttering is fitted and soffit linings installed. The most commonly used soffit lining is made of fiber cement, although steel and timber soffits are also possible. Many types of insulation can be used with light gauge steel framing, and it is important to use the correct type for your environment and to meet building code requirements for your region. The amount of insulation is often limited by the thickness of the framing used. With exterior insulation, the thickness of the insulation is not constrained by the thickness of the framing. A thermal break should be used between the framing and the cladding to help prevent heat loss and condensation and to keep the dew point outside the framing. It is also important to use a moisture barrier. In this instance, the framing is wrapped with a breathable building wrap. All external wall openings should be waterproofed using window tape. With the FrameCAD system, service routing is predetermined during the design stages and service holes are pre-punched as the framing is manufactured. Insulating grommets are inserted into the holes prior to wiring or piping being inserted. Additional service holes can be created on site using a manual service hole punch or a cordless punch. Hole saws should not be used as they leave sharp edges and produce swarf. Supports for tapware and other fittings can be easily incorporated using timber or steel nogs or purpose-designed brackets. 
Windows and doors are installed as you would with any other framing system. The only difference is the fasteners that are used. Because FrameCAD framing is produced with precision accuracy, window clearances can be as little as 0.5 of a millimeter and should in most cases fit perfectly. Once the window is square, it is fixed by using ballistic nails or WingTech screws. Interior and side hung doors are installed in a similar manner. Double wedges or solid packing should be positioned behind the hinges to ensure the hinges are well supported. All types of exterior cladding can be used on light gauge steel framing in the same way as they're used on any other framing. The only variation is the type of fasteners used. Pre-finished cladding provides a high quality finish and can be installed very quickly, so projects are not delayed due to poor weather. Fibre cement claddings are popular due to their versatility and durability. Another popular option, where the traditional look is desired, is fibre cement siding. Render systems can be combined with external EPS insulation to provide a traditional solid look for upmarket villas. Brick veneer claddings are often used with steel frame construction because it means the building can be quickly framed and closed in, enabling interior work to commence almost immediately. There are many other cladding options, including pre-painted steel and sandwich panel systems. Make sure you get expert advice on the correct type of cladding to suit your local environment and building regulations. A wide range of internal linings can be used in steel frame buildings, and the fasteners you choose will depend on the type of lining used. Drywall or gypsum is the most common. Sheets are screwed to the steel framing, and sometimes glued as well. Drill tip drywall screws can be inserted with less effort than standard sharp tip screws. Hard interior linings such as fibre cement board are often used where higher impact resistance is required and in wet areas such as bathrooms and laundries. These can be fixed using winged drillers or nailed using ballistic nail systems. Magnesium board is another option. It provides superior fire resistance which is especially important in multi-storey apartments and worker accommodation. Architraves, trim and scotias can be fitted by gluing and then nailing using ballistic panel pins. Need to know more? FrameCAD has a business policy of constant innovation and maintains close relationships with clients to ensure that the latest technology we develop is shared with them in order to help their businesses operate more efficiently and profitably.